So, ever been curious about the many different things that people love about Obsidian? Well, we're very lucky today to have Santi Young on, who's going to dive into all of the favorite things that he loves inside of Obsidian. Now, for those who don't know who Santi is, he is an Obsidian expert and covers a range of productivity tools. I've been watching his channel for a fair bit of time now and enjoying a lot of his content around Obsidian. Now, he has a channel, but also a course about how to take advantage of Obsidian and really go that step further with advanced setups and uh, real deep dives into the plugins. Now in this video he's gonna share some of the favorite things that he loves about the application to give you a taste of the power of Obsidian and how it works. So I'm super excited to have him on the channel and a huge thank you. So do make sure to check out the course below and also his own YouTube channel. But a big thanks to Santi for coming on. Now over to you Santi. Hey there, my name is Santi. I make videos on productivity apps and tools for thought. Thanks Francesco for having me here. Today I'm going to be discussing Obsidian and my favorite things about it. So let's get to it. All right, so the very first thing is customization. How much you can customize Obsidian because if you're like me and you spend countless hours on your note-taking app, which I bet you do because you watch this channel, you know how important it is for your application that you're using to look aesthetic and exactly like you like it. So there's tons of themes in Obsidian that you can choose from. I've even made a couple, which you can check out. And they're all for free. You can just like grab anything you like. You can switch from light mode to dark mode if you're like me and you live your whole life in dark mode. You might really enjoy that. That sounds depressing, but I, I just mean dark mode in the computer, right? But you can pick a lot of things and you can just really make things look the way you like them to look. There's definitely more advanced ways you can do to customize everything and there's also beginner ways. The possibilities are endless on customization. So you can really make Obsidian look the way you like it, which I think is awesome. Okay, now on owning your notes. This is one of the strongest parts about Obsidian, but what does it mean to own your notes, right? I'm glad you asked because I'm gonna tell you. Right, so the philosophy of Obsidian is really that everything that you write, you own. And this means that everything that you write in Obsidian is a file that you own in your computer. Now, this means that you're responsible for this file, but if you look after these files, you will be able to access these files in 10, 30, 50 years, right? Which is something that is really hard to anticipate if you're gonna be able to do with other note-taking tools, right? Obsidian really lets you use these files that now you own, and because they're markdown files, you can use them across other applications that use markdown. You can use simultaneously Obsidian with other applications, or if you ever want to move away from Obsidian, and you have all your files in there is super easy there's no need to export anything because because everything you already own so that's amazing i believe that's one of the strongest parts of obsidian and it's really gonna change your mind about how you should own your data and own your notes now moving on to one of the coolest things is that obsidian is free now nothing in life is ever free except for obsidian just kidding i mean nothing in life is ever free but obsidian is as close as it gets because you can use most of Obsidian functionality for absolutely free. You literally download the app, you start creating nodes, you can use all of the functionality. And it's really amazing that developers are doing something really cool by making this completely accessible for anyone. And you can use this on Mac, Windows, Linux. Now, everything in Obsidian is free. The only things that are paid are completely optional. So for instance, there is Obsidian Sync that makes your life a lot easier by syncing between computers. But if you want to, you can use something else like Dropbox or Google Drive or OneDrive, which you might already have. So Obsidian Sync makes your life a bit easier, but it's completely optional. There's other things like Obsidian Publish, which help you publish all your notes for other people to look at. You know, if you want to share a settled casting or digital garden or anything like that, it's definitely possible in Obsidian. But again, completely optional because you can use your markdown files, your original notes, and publish that in a website, right? So again, the paid functionality is things that just make your life a bit easier, but completely optional, which is really cool and makes Obsidian pretty much free, you know, compared to other software. It's not like freemium, you don't have a 30-day trial or, you know, a unlimited amount of nodes that you can create. So that's really cool. All right, so now let's talk about the mobile application. So it's really powerful because a lot of the things that you can do in your desktop, you can do in the phone app. And this works in Android and iPhone, which is great. And is really gonna be one of the best phone apps that are out there for note taking, I believe. All right, next let's talk about flexibility. Now you might have stumbled upon situations where you're using a note taking app that you really like, but you have an idea of how you want to organize something and it's not possible in that app. Now Obsidian, I believe, solves this problem because you can really create a workflow that works for you. Maybe you're someone who likes using folders. Maybe you like following something like the Para method by Tiago Forte. Forte? Forte? He's not Italian, is he? 
Sounds Italian. <laughs> Either way, the power method by Tiago Forte, which is a really powerful system that leverages folders in a really clever way. Or maybe you can customize something like Agos Bradley's PPV system if you're familiar with that. You know, folders are definitely a way you can use and you can combine them with other things. Maybe you like links, maybe you subscribe to the idea of the Settlecast in the digital garden that kind of says that everything's a folder and everything's organized by connections, then that's really cool. Or maybe you like tags. There's definitely a great way to organize tags in Obsidian. Or if you're like me, you can just combine all of this and create a workflow that works great for you. Now let's talk about links, right? Links is one of the core functionalities of Obsidian that help you interconnect nodes, interconnect ideas in really powerful ways. So for instance, you have node A and you want to connect it to node B, that's super easy to do, but also it has backlinks, meaning that if you open node B, you can really easily access the interconnection that there is between A and B. So this is really powerful and it really can change the way you think about taking notes and how ideas connect to each other in really meaningful ways. This philosophy of links really helps you establish the idea of personal time travel, which sounds crazy, but all I mean by that is that your old self, your past self, takes note about a certain idea, but because that is connected to other ideas, present you or future you can assemble upon that idea and connect it to something else. And that way you can write something meaningful out of it. If you want to write maybe a blog post or a book or anything that you want to have as creative output can be done through this method of personal time travel, which sounds like mad science, but if you try it, you might know what I mean. <laughs> Now, another thing I love is the community plugins. So the community plugins really extend Obsidian's functionality. So there's tons of things. Everything I mentioned is already possible with Obsidian as it is, but the community plugins allow you to do additional things that are really, really powerful. Like there's things such as mind maps, outliners, tables. You can do so much with the community plugins. There's so much potential in there. If you're looking for something that you want to achieve in Obsidian, there's a high chance that there's a plugin for that. So plugins are really amazing and it just makes Obsidian so extensive and so powerful. So that is definitely one of the coolest things. All right, let's talk about the community. So the Obsidian community is one of the coolest communities I've found online, not just on software, but in general. So there's a forum where you can ask for questions or help or even provide ideas of what you would like Obsidian to do. And it's actually really great because your voice is actually heard. The developers of Obsidian really make a point to listen to what you want Obsidian to do and they actually do it, which is amazing. So there's also the Discord community, which is kind of like a huge chat where you can get to know people, make friends, ask questions, provide ideas. And it's really great to be able to bond with like-minded people that really understand your obsession for note-taking and productivity. And like your real life friends and family that don't know why you're spending so much time on this. <laughs> but yeah, the community is great. It's great to get to know people that think like you, that get you. All right, so as you can see, I love Obsidian. I believe it has so many pros. If there's one con, it is how difficult or daunting it might feel to get started, right? Because Obsidian is a blank canvas and you might feel that you need to be a programmer in order to use it or you just don't know where to start. So if you're looking for a place to start, do check out my Obsidian online course. I made a huge effort to make it super beginner friendly. You don't need to learn how to code. You don't need any advanced things. You can just follow the steps and really get good at Obsidian and reap the benefits of it really fast. So I hope you check it out. And thanks to Francesco for inviting me. I hope you enjoyed this video. So yeah, thank you so much and I hope to see you soon. Bye.